welcome to the review for this week. We're reviewing needles. I've picked out three of the best needles that I've tried. So let's start with number three, the class needle. Links will be up here for you to look at all the needles. Now the class needles, they're fine. They're good. They are five in a packet. They're about five to five dollars fifty. They do have a titanium range. There's about three in the packet and they're a size 80 slash 12. So that makes it a little bit trickier to use a titanium range, which the titanium are the better needles. These don't last as long as these two here. And they don't feel like you've got a new needle in when you put a new needle in. And what that means is that when you've put a new needle in, it should, when you sew, there should be no resistance. That when you sew, the needle pierces through the fabric smoothly and you can feel the difference when you're sewing. There shouldn't be any resistance, like I said. So that's number three. Then we have the Schmitz. They're number two. These are titanium and they're great. They sew beautifully. You can tell you've got a new needle in. The only drawback for these is their price. They're $12 Australian. So that really holds it back because my number one choice are superior needles and they are $6 American for the same amount. Five titanium. So that makes it a very big number one. A couple of other things that make them number one. Number two of the things that make them number one is their needle eye size is very big. So that's a big draw card for threading thicker threads or just actually threading a needle. So that's a great size. And also on the website it says that their needles last about five to eight times longer. And I can say that they do last about five times longer for me. So that is a big bonus. You're buying needles that are half the price of something very good and you're getting five times longer life out of them. Great value. And another little handy thing about the superior needles is that the superior threads on the inside of their cone tells you what needle size to use. So you just turn the cone upside down, see that it says 100 slash 16, and there you go. That's the needle you need. I love that little helpy, helpful hint. So that's the review for this week. Hi, welcome to another free motion mini lesson. This week we're going to work on bubbles. Now, bubbles are a good thing to learn with because they're a nice simple thing. You draw bubbles and you draw them together like this. The one thing you need to practice with when you're doing free motion is to not lift your needle up as least as possible you want to lift your needle up and move spots. So with bubbles it's a good practice. What we want to do also within a f when we're doing free motion is to come around and you need to be tracing over without going into the other space because obviously it looks a lot neater. So to learn how to do that bubbles are a good thing because they're a nice small circle obviously <laughs> to start with. So we're not lifting our needle up, we're going round. And bubbles can be any shape you want. So if you want to just do a nice tiny one to practice, then a nice bigger one. And you just come back and see because it's a smaller, smaller size, you can see where you've started. So it makes it easier when you're coming back to end up not going over. So practice that for a little bit. You just keep going around, small ones, small ones, nice little ones. Fill in all those gaps. The little ones fill in the gaps, then do a couple of big ones to fill in some space. And then you go around. Now if you do go over, let's, oh, we've gone over. What you can do is go back over this bubble and fix up that shape. And then we just unpick this little bit here. And so you've still got a good bubble there, and all you have to do is just unpick that little bit instead of unpicking two bubbles. So let's start with our sandwich sheet. So from last week, remember our sandwich sheet? If you need the, the, the tip for that, just go to last week's last video. And also, as a little side note, the feet, your free motion darling foot, is important. This is a Junomi one and this is a brother one. The only difference is the Junomi one is open here and that is called an open toe and they're great to have that open toe. The brother one is great too, they're clear. They don't have the open toe. I know there are tutorials on the internet of how to cut that out. 
but the clear toe are the best. You can get metal ones, but clear obviously because you can see through. So that's good. Now also when we start sewing, what we want to do is we want to put the needle down, bring the needle back up again, and we want to pull that little bit of thread that comes up. It's never big enough. I always poke myself on the needle. And then you want to have both stick it under and back and that way you don't have a nest underneath and it's smooth so that when you cut off all the threads later it's it's smooth and there's no mess. So let's start, we're going to do bubbles. So let's start with a few bubbles. Now I apologise for the noise of my sewing machine. Now straight away let's do a couple of big ones and we're going round. So just take the time. So See how slow I'm going? It doesn't matter how fast the sewing machine is going. And you can go back around. What you want to try and avoid doing too is going all the way around your bubble. Just go around a quarter. So we're going to go back here, around, and then around here. And like I said, if you do happen to go over, just try and sew over it again. Around. So let's take it out here so we can see again. So there's your bubble. And then all you do is follow it around and then just go out at some point. Out into that same point. Then do the same thing. Follow that bubble around a bit. Okay, I'm going to go out now. Alright, so we're coming up. You can see I'm tracing this bubble. And that's what you want to learn to do. So if you want to just sit there for a few days, for a few minutes, a few days, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> and just trace along a bubble, just so that you're learning how to keep inside and on the same line. So we're going to keep on that same line, come out again. All right, and there we are, we're matched up again. Let's do a little one, and that fills that little gap. The little ones are nice and easy too, because obviously you only have to go around a tiny bit to make it up again. So, so that's what you do. Come out, go out, come in. You come to that same point. And like I said, if you had, if you go over, let's let's do one by mistake. Let's go over. Let's do this one over. All right. So like I showed you in the photo, I've gone over. You can see it here. So just come back over here, fix it up, and then you still have a bubble. I'll show you. I'll finish up here. So your bubble is still a bubble, and then we can just unpick this little bit instead of unpicking the whole bubbles. So, if you want to keep practicing with that, just keep doing bubbles over everything. Bubbles is a great filler, absolutely beautiful filler. Pebbles, you know, you do all sorts of different shapes. I'll fill in for some, and I'll show you just... Okay, so there we've got a gap, so we just go in there. Pull that gap, nice tiny one. Come out. And there we go. And it, it's just practice by how you know where to go. So just sit there and practice. Practice, practice. Like that. Alright, 